afternoon and welcome to Fort Laramie High School where this afternoon WSN brings you a ladies matchup between the two of the top programs in Northwestern Ohio. That would be the Bath Wild Kittens and the Fort Laramie Redskins. My name is Mark Shine. My pleasure to do play by play. Alongside the new our color commentary, Mr. Dave Bowen. Dave, uh, we got an interesting matchup first, first of all. Congratulations to both teams for choosing to play quality competition on a Saturday, getting outside of league play. Yeah, Mark, it's great to be your wingman this evening, and I couldn't agree with you more. This is a great measurement game towards the end of the regular season, but yet you still have a lot of big conference games to play, but it's Division Two versus Division Four, two quality programs. You're not going to see each other in tournament. You want to throw some things out there and really see where you stand against quality basketball programs in each other. Let's look at the visiting Bath Wild Kittens and Greg Mock's team. They come in at 11-4. They're 5-1 and one in Western Buckeye League play. Your analysis of the Wild Kittens. Well, when you talk about a Greg Mock team, typically you talk about outside shooting, but they go inside as well with this team. Ann Oliver, the second leading scorer at 12 points per game. She can shoot it outside, but she can take you inside. She'll play the one, two, three, four, and five. Just a quality basketball player, a senior that Coach Mock works around. She was a third team WBL player last year. And again, she is somewhat the straw that stirs the drink for this Bath Wild Kitten team. Going to be fun to watch her play today. Here's a Wild Kitten starting lineup. Number two, Faith Clark, 5'3", junior, averaging 1.8 points per game. Number 22, Claire Faust, 6'1", senior, at 13 points and 11 rebounds per game. Number 23 is Kelsey Carlson, 5'8", Southamore, 7.8 points per game. Number 24, Izzy McDermott, 5'6", Southamore. She averages 6.5 points a game, but she has made 23 three-point field goals on the season. And number 32 is Ann Oliver. Ann Oliver is a 6-foot senior, averaging 12 points a game and 6 rebounds. So let's take a look then at uh, Carla Siegel's team. Dave, they come in 15-2. and two. They are 9-0 and 0 in the Shelby Athletic Conference Athletic League. Division four, number one team in the state right now as well, Mark. And they just come at you in waves. And talking with Coach Siegel before the game here, she wants to even develop more depth. She said, I really feel like we're only about eight deep right now. I want to get that, get that up to ten. Well, that's not a good omen for other teams in Division Four come tournament time. And I think we'll see her go deeper today than normal, again, because of wanting to develop that depth against a quality uh, program like Bath. But when you look at Fort Laramie, you're looking at the leading scorer, Victoria Mesher. She was the second team Shelby County Athletic League team selection last year. She leads them in scoring at 12 points per game, 55% field goal percentage, tied for first in rebounding with five. The six-foot junior forward, the straw that stirs the drink for Fort Laramie. Again, there's a lot of depth with this team. Victoria, though, she leads the way. Great leadership from Mesher and this Fort Laramie squad. Let's look at their starting lineup. Uh, Dave just mentioned Victoria Mesher. She wears number 21. She is a six-foot junior, as Dave said, averaging 12 points and 5.3 rebounds. Number 22 is Skylar Albers, 5'10", senior at 10 points per game and four boards. Number 30, Jaden Rose, 5'6", senior. She averages 6.3 points per game and nearly four assists. Number 40, Avery Brandewe. Avery's a 5'10 junior. She averages eight points a game and five plus rebounds. And number 41, Summer Hoying. Summer's a 5'11 senior. She averages 8.6 and nearly five rebounds per game. It is Fort Laramie hosting the Bath Wild Kittens, and it'll be coming up next. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School. Today's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Well, Dave Bowen, they just had a thing on the, uh, the PA a moment ago. Both these schools have over 900 wins in their school program. Of course, Bath has done it with just two head coaches. Yep. Carla Siegel's been here how many years? 25. 25 years. Great success for her. I'm looking at the state championship banners down here. And right there on that wall, 26-0 in 2020, a team that many think was their best team that COVID knocked out. It's a great program that she's put together here. Absolutely. And she's been here 25 years, and it reflects that tradition rich. 200, 900, or two 900-win programs. And I think this is a game, Mark, that's going to be Oh, yeah, take that. 
It's going to yep. be punch, counter punch, just a lot of action, a lot of competitive spirit, and let's get it on. Our officials today, Jason Purcell, Monica England, and Brian Th Throckmorton, and Monica England will do the toss at center court. We have Claire Faust there along with Summer Hoying. Bath in their yellow uniforms today. And of course, Fort Laramie in their home white with red and black trim. This is Oliver. Down inside, Claire Faust. The two seniors have had wonderful years for Coach Mock. Faith Clark on top of the circle and then back to Claire Faust. Fort Laramie in man-to-man -man defense. They're gonna be swarming defensively in that man all day long. 23 is Kelsey Carlson. And back to Oliver Bath, very patient on this possession. And we're gonna get a travel call. We'll go against Bath, and that will be our first turnover of the game, 32 seconds into this. Had a discussion before the game with Coach Monk about the traveling call and how sometimes it's not called. Unfortunately, it was that time against his player, but it was definitely a, a travel, and Bath opens up in that 2-2-1. Two, two, Pass ends up into the hands of Victoria Mesher. Baseline jumper, that will bounce out for Skyler Albers, rebound to Claire Faust who averages 11 rebounds a game and has a couple of games this year which had more than 20 rebounds. Oliver bounced pass to Claire Faust, spins into the lane, and what are we gonna get, held ball or foul? It will be a held ball, and that will be a second turnover. So yeah, two possessions, two turnovers for Bath, and then I know that 2-2-1 press, sometimes called a nuisance press, just try to make you do things fundamentally correct. And if you do that, you'll be okay. Fort Laramie breaks it here, Mark. They did. Ball ends up in the hands of Victoria Mesher. It's a three gonna go up that will rattle out for Jaden Rose, but the rebound comes to her teammate, Avery Brandewe, and back out front they go. Mesher looking for a teammate, finally finds Jaden Rose. Bath in the 2-3. Yep, exactly. 2-3 defense off the press. Baseline jumper off a screen, and that will go for Avery Brandewe. She's coming off a 14-point game against Jackson Center on Thursday evening. Here's Oliver in a hurry. Step through, and gets her own rebound, and that one's taken away from her by Jaden Rose. Here's the long pass ahead, trying to track it down as Albers, and she does, but she throws it to Faith Clark. Here's what we'll see, that transition. Both teams trying to make the other team pay for a poor decision, the turnover. Bath attacks. Oliver going to go to the free throw line. She is. She'll get a couple of free throws. Our free throws today are brought to you by OPAC in Osgood for all your industrial painting. Standing and assembly needs, you can call OPAC. Two throws, Oliver. For the foul will go to Summer Hoying and to the free throw line. Will go Ann Oliver, where she shoots 71% on the season. Second on the team. As we talked about in the opening, she is that straw. We've seen it here early on. The ball has been in her hands quite a bit. Second in a lot of categories in scoring at 12, free throw percentage at 71, six boards second there, 46% field goal percentage. She gets Bath on the board here. It's 2-1 Redskins early on as they get the ball into the middle of the press to measure. To the wing it goes to Albers, and then bounce pass inside. Power lap will go for Summer Hoying. Summer Hoying, one of the most improved players on this Fort Laramie squad, takes advantage of drop stepping on the block. There's a three ball that go up. That one will miss. The rebound comes into the hands of Albers, and she's in a hurry the other way. Skyler Albers goes length to the floor and scores. Albers so quick in transition, and Coach Mock did not like how that transmission basket took place. That's a timeout. Metzger Financial Services brings you our timeout today, helping you plan your financial future. You can call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Back in a moment, you're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Dave Bowen, quick timeout, Bath. I don't think Coach Mock liked that transition basket took place. Exactly, Skyler Albers, she was going down the floor dribbling the basketball faster than some of the players were transitioning defensively without it, and she gets to the glass and scores. You're right, Coach Mock, he's not gonna allow that to happen without being discussed. One thing we've not brought up to you today are scoring and defensive averages today. Fort Laramie averages 54 points a game, they give up 31. Bath averages 46 and a half points per game. They give up 35. 
Hustling into the game is Brandewe as she runs down to be part of the diamond press. Oliver, ball reversal into the hands of McDermott, and she's trapped, and ball got kicked. Yeah, Izzy McDermott just did a real fundamentally sound piece right there. She came up to the timeline but did not dribble it across where she would have been in the trap zone. Nicely done, good coaching, good execution by Izzy. Faith Clark bounce passes it inside. Here's another bounce pass across the lane, and the finish will go to number 12, Gwen Faust, who checked in at the timeout break. Yeah, Gwen Faust averages two points per game, and she gets the first field goal for the Wildcats. And right to the rim, and finishing is Albers again. She went around the safety in that defense. In the place of, of Claire Faust, going to get a foul that will go against Fort Laramie. Well, you can definitely see, as we said, oh, yeah, take that. Fort Laramie's philosophy, if you're going to pressure us with your defense, we're going to pressure you with our offense. Fight pressure with pressure. Fort Laramie, their possessions, they have been short and succinct and overall successful thus far. Is in McDermott advancing to basketball. This is Faust. Had that basket just a moment ago, and then Claire Faust. Uh, Faust. Bounce pass inside. Left-handed push shot. That was a pretty shot by Claire Faust. She's in the books with a basket. Yeah, the leading scorer on the squad at 13 points per game. Give the assist to Oliver. Good teamwork between the two. Good post move and a finish right there. Kissing it off the window. Working inside and trying to go off glass was Brandewee, and she will draw contact. But, yeah, we don't have a stopwatch, yeah. but the – the length of possession for Fort Laramie has probably been around 10 seconds. You don't think they need a shot clock? <laughs> they <laughs> not, do not, not today, need anyway, a shot no. clock today. Here's Brandon with the free throw line. This is a good free throw shooting team. She shoots 74% on the season. All that one rattled out. Fort Laramie coming off a Thursday night win over Jackson Center, 62-36. Bath defeated Salina, 41-27 as a second free throw. Sponsored by OPAC, goes down. It's 9-5, home team. Oliver, McDermott, and they get it across. She throws it down to Claire Faust. Claire works under a double team. Skip pass is blocked, and we're headed the other way. Long pass ahead, and trying to handle the basketball on the baseline was Avery Brandaway. Yeah, tip your cap a little bit to Ann Oliver right there. Two-on-one situation, and she was able to get a deflection, knock it out of bounds, so her team can set the defense. Alex Rose will enter, so will Ariel Heitkamp. You talked about Coach wanted to get some depth in the game today. Short jumper, back of the rim, bounces around, Faust rebounds. And Claire finds Oliver, and they're going to throw it ahead. This is Marley Mason who came in a moment ago as well. She wears number 10. Marley looking for a teammate, and bounce passes it to a cutting. Claire Faust, that's a nice pass, and Faust going to get to go to the free throw line. Yeah, Mason dribbled the ball down into that corner. Fort Laramie trapped her right there. you got to tip your cap to Izzy McDermott. She came to her teammate and then got the ball to number 23, Kelsey Carlson, who's going to the free throw line as a result. But again, a fundamental there, well coached by Coach Mock. We are in a trap situation. Go to your teammate. Don't just stand and wave your hand. You've got to go help her out. Claire Faust has three and now four points in the game. It's a 9-7 lead, Redskins. As we come the other way with Jaden Rose with the basketball. This is the young lady who just checked in, Height Camp. She wears number 11. Three ball out of the corner is short. But the rebound falls into the hands of a Redskin, and Claire Faust goes up and snatches it. She's going to try to throw it ahead. The steal, however, is made by Heitkamp. Her shot misses, and the scramble for the ball. Who hit it out of bounds? It went off a of bath wild kitten. Heitkamp was in defensive rotation, but she saw the ball go up in the air and like a safety on the football field. She went and got it and then attacked. Didn't get, didn't get the bucket mark, but... Nice defensive play. Victoria Mesher will re-enter the basketball game as Avery Brandewe looks for someone to throw it to. She finds a teammate Alex Rose who wears 23 and checked in a moment ago. That shot's blocked by Oliver on the attempt by Mesher. That's got a couple of six-foot ladies inside that can play really well big when they're playing big. 
Yeah, they both did a nice job. It was a nice post move, just better defense on that situation. Here's Faust working the lane. She lost her dribble and kind of held ball in the baseline. This will stay with the Wild Kittens with 2.48 to go. Our scoreboard brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken has the 9-7 Fort Laramie. Back into the game, Summer Hoying. A lot of possessions both ways, but the defense has kept the scoring from being a reflection of all those possessions right now. Mason throws it inside to Faust. Turnaround left-handed shot, bounces out for her. The rebound will come to Mesher. Here's Victoria. That was a really nice pressure job by Gwen Faust. Caused the ball to go out of bounds off of the Redskins. Yeah, just stepped out on that passing lane and it deflected then off of Victoria Mesher. McDermott gives it up to Oliver and then back to Izzy McDermott. Mason, Oliver. Oliver heads to the rim, goes through contact and scores. And Go Oliver has three in the game. Yeah, goes against Summer Hoying there, would not be denied. Oliver taking it to the rack, ties it up at nine. Two minutes to go, opening quarter. Bath now in more of a one-two-two -two zone. Mesher working in the lane through traffic and she will draw a foul. Good up and under move. Both of these programs, as we said, very tradition-rich, successful in what they do, but I'm very impressed with the post play at both ends. The footwork, Mark, incredible. If anybody has foul situations, it would be Claire Faust because she just picked up her second as that free throw will fall in for Victoria Mesher. And Faust is going to come out of the game, but I don't think she'll sit the whole half with two fouls. She's just going to have to play smart when she goes back in. Carissa Meyer, who wears number 12, 5'8", senior, will enter. And both free throws from Mesher. Both OPAC free throws from Mesher. 11-9, Oliver with the basketball. Loramie now full court man. No press or no trap situation. That ball's knocked out of bounds by Mesher. Stays with the Wild Kittens. So much flexibility out here, too, Mark. The post girl can rebound it and bring it up the floor for both teams. Got to be able to handle the basketball. Just Mason so throws it across high. court, finds a teammate. Basket will go for Gwen Faust. She's got four in the opening quarter. Nice back cut on the back side. A wide open look. You don't see that in this game happening very often. Surrounded down inside. The ball's tipped back out front. Ends up into the hands of Rose. Short jumper for her, and we're going to get a foul. And is that after the shot? Yeah, it is. It is. And Oliver, that is her first, the team's third, so we're not to the bonus yet. Rose will do the inbounding. Skyler Albers. Rose gets a jumper off the corner, short. Rebound comes to Mason. Marley Mason. Five, six freshmen. Oliver spins into the lane, short jumper. Had a chance to be an and one. Instead, she'll get a couple of OPAC free throws. Great hesitation move right at the free throw line. Caught the defense, thinking she was going to hand it off, and then she turned and gets the shot off, draws the contact. The Cardinal sin committed there by Fort Laramie. Never jump a, or foul a jump shooter. Oliver goes to the line. And it was Skyler Albers who picked up her second foul. Izzy McDermott will re-enter for Bath. And that one's hard. And, oh, nice play to keep it in bounds, but still ended up in the hands of a wild kitten. Good hustle play by Carissa Meyer. Oliver, pass inside. That shot's blocked, however. Good block inside by Jaden Rose. Here's a pass ahead. And lost out of bounds with 44.1 to go. Bath up a point. Talk about that defensive play by Jaden Rose. Does a nice job. Soft pass stolen by Brandewey. Here's a three that's going to go up from Rose. Nope. Tracked down in the corner, however, by Maddie Chateau. And back to Bath. Oliver. 
And kind of an accidental foul by Shadow. But I think that is the fifth. And we will shoot with that because of that. 5-5 five, five freshman is Maddie Shadow. And am I not correct? We're not, yeah, Coach Mock say, yeah, here we go. We're going to walk down and shoot those free throws. Bonus free throws will go to Izzy McDermott. She, yeah. Maddie Shadow, one of those girls, again, that Coach uh, Siegel wants to get into the game and develop that depth, as we said, going 9-10 deep. And right now they have gone nine thus far in this game. Well, Dave, the stat page says that is the first free throw miss of the season for Izzy McDermott. Yeah, she was eight for eight coming and, in. Yeah, comes right back and makes that one for her poor first point. Bath up two. And now nice bounce back, if you will, to go nine for ten now in the season. Pass inside, and on the pass inside, we'll get a foul. That will be Bass' fourth team foul, and it goes to Faith Clark, her first. Faith Clark, she's a little spark plug out there. That is a fact. Undersized a little bit in this game, but don't tell her that. Rose wanted to take a three, ends up driving baseline, and Clark gets a steal. And that is something that she does. Handles the basketball and plays defense. Yeah, maximum role player for Coach Mock, an MRP, and we see it on display right there, Mark. Oliver, Wild Kittens want to get the last shot of the opening quarter. Hands off to Clark. She's going to take a three ball, and she made it. Say, I'll show you my defense. Watch this shot. Her eighth three-point oh, wow. field goal of the year, and thanks to the long pass, we're going to get a couple of free throws for Fort Laramie at the buzzer. The foul goes to Gwen Faust, her first. Now the horn went off, so are we gonna, gonna clear the lane? Yep. I think we are, and Carissa Meyer, who shoots 78% from the free throw line, will get a pair. Just so impressive, a, a shot made what we thought was basically the last shot going to be taken of the quarter, and Laramie with pressure, offense, transition offense, able to get a look and a foul, just putting yourself in a position to get some points scored when really, in all reality, that should not have happened. So the second free throw goes down at the end of one. It'll be Bath 16, Fort Army 12. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Back at Fort Army, our scoreboard today is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. And before I forget, how are you doing on your quest to eat at every single Lee's? I know. I haven't made it to St. Mary's yet, but I've got the it's other the three home. locations. You know, I have to do that. Today, yeah. I have to do that. Yes, you're right. Opening quarter, 16-12. Four points for three different Wild Kittens. Ann Oliver, Claire Faust, and Gwen uh, Faust as well. Four for Skylar Alberts. Pretty balanced scoring for both teams. Balanced scoring. Again, both teams looking to do what they do well. Fort Lormie transition offense. Bath really executing in the half court against that stingy Fort Lormie man. Trap man. on the wing pass. They've got the ball in front to Shadow. This is going to go inside and a little baseline jumper. That was a nice shot by Summer Hoying. She's got four in the game. Yeah, the most improved player on this Loramie squad this year, Summer Hoying scores. I've noticed Fort Loramie, when they do get in the half court, they run a lot of their offense to the left. Gwen Faust throws it in the corner to Faith Clark, and the pass was high, and she couldn't handle it. Coach Mock still has Claire Faust on the bench with her couple of fouls as Ariel Heitkamp will enter. And not that it's illegal to run the offense to the left. It's just that most teams are right-handed. Yep. Uh, and Bath defensively may be pushing them to the left a little bit more out of that zone. But here they come Rose. again. Baseline. Short jumper bounces around for Summer Hoying to Ann Oliver. And she clears the rebound. Constant pressure by Fort Laramie. McDermott looking for somebody to pass it to and... Did she step out of bounds? It went out of bounds. Uh, the ball went off of Fort ah, Laramie. I see. So Coach Mock was trying to call a timeout. Doesn't need to use it now. Keeps the possession. Uh -oh. Lobbed it to nobody. Jumper missed. Rebound. Battle. And battle is the key word. 
And somehow the ball comes into the hand of a Fort Laramie Redskin, and Coach Siegel takes a timeout. 7.01 to go in the second. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. First time out for Fort Laramie. Our timeouts today are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. That's a timeout by Coach Siegel. At the quarter break, we focused on her timeout a little bit, her huddle. She was giving some focused intensity, and her girls have really picked it up defensive, uh, defensively with Lobbed the pressure. inside on the inbounds pass. Victoria Mesher will draw a foul on the inbounds play. That goes to Ann Oliver. And now both Oliver and Claire Faust have two fouls to the free throw line. Victoria Mesher. Three for three for her in the game today. Yeah, and she came in shooting 56% from the line, so that three for three is going to increase her percentage nicely. And that one will bounce out. Battle for the rebound. It comes into the hands of Shadow. Nope. Another rebound on the offensive side, and putting the ball back up was Avery Brandewey, and she will draw a foul. Now, who's this one on? This one will go to Gwen Faust, and she also has two fouls in the game, and Claire Faust is going to re-enter after these free throws. Our free throw sponsor today is OPAC in Osgood for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. You can call OPAC. Avery Brandewe, a 74% free throw shooter. Uh, first team, SCAL selection from last year. Coach Stiegel also feels like she's one of her maximum role players in what she's asking her to do this year. A you lot of she, the little things. You said she shoots 74%. She's three for four. And right on. Right so on that ball's number. trapped right on the baseline was Izzy McDermott, and the ball will go back to Bath as the Reds can hit it out of bounds. We have definitely seen the full court defensive intensity go to another level here for Fort Laramie here in the second quarter. McDermott. Claire Faust, who just re-entered a moment ago, stepped through. And what do we got? Ann Oliver just picked up foul number three. Fort Laramie being aggressive, getting in the passing lanes. And when the ball was loose there a little bit, Oliver reaches over the top. She gets called for the foul. And that is a key player. because Oliver does so much for this basketball team. The ball was in play. That's why we couldn't get the sub in. Rose throws it inside. Oh, it's got to be careful. Tipped around. Still ends up in Fort Laramie's hand. They're just hammering the offensive boards right now. Rose looks. Height camp. Pass inside. And that nice cross-court pass ends up in the hand of Victoria Mesher. She's got points four and five. Oliver lobs it ahead, and Mesher gets that one. Press bother the Wild Kittens. Yeah, threw that into double coverage. Fort Lomery able to knock it away. Another steal. Oliver gets this steal. she got to be careful going yep. to the rim here. Good jump stop. It was, and she tries to go up inside, and no call. Rose ahead of the pack, and she will be fouled going to the rim. Going back and forth. A lot of action. That Kelsey Carlson will get that foul, and her first, team's fourth of the quarter. Here's Jaden Rose to shoot free throws, where she's been at 85% on the season. Yeah, she is the leading free throw shooter for these Fort Laramie Redskins. That's a good foul by Kelsey Carlson right there. Just uh, the momentum was changing, and let's slow things down. Attack defensively. Didn't allow the bucket to be scored. She makes that OPAC free throw. Her first point of the game. Marley Mason entered, and that... Took an ant all over the game with 5.39 to go. And, you know, here in quarter number two, she's got three fouls. Three fouls. It's an 8-0 run by Fort Laramie coming out of the quarter break. 
Well, what happened there is Kelsey Carlson was trying to cut to an open area on the floor, and she was fouled. That will be the second foul that will go on Maddie Shadow. Hustling into the game is Avery Brandewi. She will play Ariel Heitkamp's place. You know, one of the things about Oliver not being in there at six foot, she was taught to see over some of these traps and then now being replaced by a shorter player. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to put her back in, but Coach Mall can't allow this score to creep away any further than it is right now. Big possession for Bath right now. Yeah, they have not scored here in quarter number two after having 16 in the opening eight minutes. And we're going to get a five-second count. We'll go the other way. Good defense by Fort Laramie right there to get the five-second call. And also maybe a result of Ann Oliver not being on the floor too, Mark. I was about to ask you if you thought maybe the defensive pressure had ratcheted up a little it bit has from Team Warren White. Yep, here in the second quarter. Definite difference between the first quarter and second quarter for the Redskins. 2016 on our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard, and that will be a foul. That goes to Faith Clark, and now Faith has two fouls, and that is the fifth foul in quarter number two. And with that, and 5.03 to go, going to be a lot of free throws going up from Fort Laramie. Here's Brandewey, who's four for, or three for four now, and four for five. Yeah, right now, if you're a Bath Wild kid, it feels like there's about eight or nine white shirts out there just everywhere you look. You're trying to find your teammate, and it seems like there's a white shirt in between you and your teammate to pass the ball to. It's just really challenging. On the missed free throw, it's knocked out of bounds by a Fort Army Redskin. And Carlson tries to inbound it. But there's just too many white shirts everywhere. Yeah, a lot of white Pushing shirts. Pushing them right down towards the baseline trying to inbound. Uh-huh. And it's a diamond, diamond press, but yet with man-to-man -man principles on the inbound pass. There's Ball. a steal. Yes, it is. Pass inside and powering up inside. And I think that was Summer Hoying. She's got six in the game. Yeah, Coach Mock's got to take a timeout. That he does. 4.49 to go here in the quarter. Number two is Fort Laramie, 23, Bass 16. Our timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Back in a moment, you're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Back at Fort Army, court cutters can access WSN for free with an antenna on 44.2 or app at $8 per month. You can sign up app.wsn.tv. And I get it on 44.2. Yes, I, I was just going to say, it. I'm a cord cutter over in Convoy. Pick it up with the old You mean that there's, there, there's internet in Convoy? You guys have progressed to the point you have the internet We do have there? internet, but I use an in antenna yeah, okay. to get right. WSN. Just, yes. just checking. I didn't know the internet had made it over there. You, Hulu. You I'm on Hulu. All right. All right. Hey, me too. Yeah, there you yeah, go. All right. All right. Bath has called a timeout. They've not scored here in the quarter. We're three minutes plus into this. And we're going to see a little bit different zone this time. Yeah, great move by Coach Siegel coming out of the timeout. Give the Wild Kittens a different look, a 1-3-1 half-court trap. McDermott looking for somebody. She's doubled up out front. She finally gets it over to Mason. Cross-court pass. Clark, bounce pass Nicely inside. Done. And Faust missed the shot. Rushed it, couldn't get it to go for her. Everything but the bucket. Heitkamp coming down the floor. She finds Rose. And then the ball goes on top to Brandewey down inside. Hoing. Summer Hoing's got eight, six in the quarter. Super post move right there by Summer Hoing with a kiss off the window. Mason throws it up ahead. She finds Carlson. McDermott. And back to Carlson. Faust in the corner. Claire Faust finds Mason and then posts up inside. Faust, left-handed shot in the lane, missed that one. Rebound comes to Brandewee. Rose looks inside to Hoing again. And Mesher. 
Bats staying in the zone defense. Ariel Heitkamp will pass to the wing to Avery Brandaway. Here's a pass and cut inside and a really nice high-low pass that ends up in Mesher's hands. Yeah, Hoying to Mesher. Nice dime by Summer Hoying with that assist. Great pass. Mason's trapped in the corner looking for somewhere to go. She loses it to Rose. That shot will go inside for Brandaway. I think Coach Mock's thinking about taking another timeout. She's got eight. Here's another steal. That one was taken away by Jaden Rose, and she will get to go to the free throw line. You know, Coach Mock has put, no, he still doesn't have Ann Oliver in the game. He's thinking about it. Yeah, we run Gwen Faust back in, and that is Claire Faust, third Faust, so the problems continue to mount for the Wild Kittens. Yeah, it's, he's, in, he's in Kenny Loggins' land right now as Coach Mock. He's in the danger zone. Just foul trouble and the way Fort Laramie is playing and the pressure they're putting on. Just really, really tough situation for the Wild Kittens right now. Miley Shadows winning at the scorer's table. She wants to replace Rose if the second OPAC free throw can go in. And that it does. 30-16 on our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Again, Bath has not scored here in the second quarter. Five minutes plus. Pass ahead, Faith Clark. Cross-court pass, Mason. This is Gwen Faust, who wears number 12. And Faith Clark. And that will be a foul on the wing to Ariel Heitkamp. Just, Just a second yeah. team foul for Lormie here in the second quarter. They have done an outstanding job of moving their feet, being in the passing lanes, and not creating the foul. 18 to zero run right now in the second quarter. Alex Rose, who wears number 23, will enter as the number of bodies just continues to mount. That Coach Siegel's able to get in the game, and we're going to get a five count as Mason couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Bath has used a couple of timeouts, one in each quarter so far. Here's the odd guard zone they're playing now. Baseline jumper, that falls for Maddie, uh, Miley Shadow. She steps in the game and nails one for her team. Nice baseline look, hit nothing but the bottom of the net. And here's that relentless McDermott's pressure. McDermott's got nowhere to go. She finally bounces it off the leg of Avery Brandewee. The pressure's great. I, I, Bath, though, again, Mark, they're not rattled. They're just trying to find teammates. They're not... They're trying to do what they can. I guess it's just not, just not working out for them with that stingy defense. On Man. the baseline they go. Here's Mason trying to beat the press with a dribble, which she does. And then the ball gets away from Carlson. And Lormy just does such a great job of keeping you out of the middle of the floor. When you do dribble, penetrate against that zone, they push you down into the corner, and then they look to trap you there and take the reversal away from you, which they did on that particular possession, another turnover against the Wild Kittens. Kelsey Carlson will pick up her second foul into the free throw line, goes Alex Rose. Entering for the first time is Allison Harnischfeger for Bath. She wears number 34. She's a 5'9 sophomore. And Rose will get another free throw, another OPAC free throw. This one bounces out for her. Faust trying to beat the press, and she goes across midcourt, and she gets trapped. Scrambles for it, gets it back. Here's Harnischfeger, just came in a moment ago to Clark. And we're going to get a foul as Faith Clark was headed to the rim. The old Bronx cheer from the Bath contingent. There's been some contact out there. I, I see their point of view a little bit. But again, you, you got to take care of the basketball and not, not go into those situations where the sideline or the timeline is also playing defense because you put yourself in a trap zone. Harness figure gets it taken away from her by Hoying, but she knocked it out of bounds in the process. That foul went to Alex Rose, who now has two, and she was forced to take a seat. Lob pass out front. 
Gwen Faust. Mason. And Faith Clark tries to set the offense. Nice move. Faust tries to go baseline, and she gets pushed out of bounds. Accidentally, but still a foul. Trying to find some penetration lanes, draws contact, and the foul's the result. Victoria Messer's first foul. That's the fourth team foul with 90 seconds to go here in quarter number two. Bounce pass inside, and Harness figure shot won't fall, but the rebound comes to Gwen Faust. Mason wanted to shoot, got covered up quickly. McDermott thought about one, couldn't pull the trigger. Here's a three out of the corner. That one missed. Rebound Mason. Nope. Tipped away from her, and the scramble will get a held ball. Again, Bath unable to find comfortability in their half-court offense, and you've got to give all the credit to that lower me defense. They've sped them up, making it real tough. So even when you have an open look, you're not able to shoot it with rhythm because of the defensive pressure. Ariel Heitkamp enters the basketball game for Coach Siegel. It's a lob out on top to Faust. And then McDermott, Harness figure. Scoop shot, nope. Rebound comes to Mesher. Victoria's gonna lead the break to Rose. Cross court pass, and that's about as well as you can run a break and unfortunately, unfortunately missed a shot. Yeah, the ball did not hit the floor. There was no dribble in that transition. McDermott trapped out front. Mason. Mason, ball's tipped, but she still gets it to Faust. Corner and McDermott, three goes up. Short, long rebound. And Clark runs him off the ball, but stepped out of bounds with it. Yeah, good hustle by Faith Clark right there. Just unable to get established before going out of bounds. And Fort Laramie, if you just watch, once that ball looks like it's going to touch a teammate's hand on a rebound, if you're on the wing, you're flying. And that ball goes out of bounds. I don't think anybody touched it, which means it should go back on the baseline, and it will, but it will go to Bath. Oh, Allison Harnischfeger with 17.4 will enter the basketball for Bath. And the Redskins are going to drop back to some half-court trap situations. Or just straight man, it looks like. McDermott. Is he pressure by Victoria Mesher? And that will put Bath at the free throw line with 7.1 to go. And they will get an OPAC free throw. You can visit our website, WSN.TV, for scores, standings, access to our broadcast schedule, and the WSN apps. So the free throw line goes McDermott. And that is the first point for Bath in this quarter. They have had to fight for everything just to get shots off of uh, this defense. And McDermott right here at the free throw line does a nice job getting that first point of the quarter. It makes them both. Seven seconds to go for the Redskins to get a shot. Rose looks, skip pass, high camp for three, short. Good effort, just missed it. Fort Laramie with a huge quarter at number two will take a 32-18 to the break. Second half action coming up after this. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Laramie. We're about set for third quarter action. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Dave Bowen, it's a 20-2 quarter for the Fort Laramie Redskins, hence their 14-point lead. Yeah, Coach Siegel's got to be real pleased there at the quarter break. As we said, she was uh, fairly intense with her team, down 16-12 to 12 after quarter one, and boy, did they respond. I think her halftime discussion is let's be even cleaner on defense. Our pressure has been outstanding. Let's even move quicker, better, and with more purpose. You know, Coach Mock, 
we got to be fundamental, girls. Eat it if you can't see it. We had too many turnovers. Got to find your teammate. Make sure she is there. If not, eat it. We can defend a five-second call. We can defend a dead ball turnover. And then focus on being us. Uh, let's focus on each possession, not the scoreboard. And if we stay locked into the possession and play bath, wild kitten basketball, We'll give ourselves an opportunity to fight back into this. Avery Brandui, Summer Hoying each have eight. Victoria Mesher has seven. Three Bath girls have four points as the ball goes inside to Mesher. Kick out three. That missed. Backside rebound. And that opening basket will go to Brandui. She becomes a double-figure scorer now with ten. Nice offensive rebound stick back against the zone defense. Got to find bodies and check them. Oliver, Faust, and we're going to get a foul on that pass to midcourt. One of the few Summer times, yep. yeah, one of the few times Bath has been able to get the ball to the middle against this pressure, and when they were able to do so, they, they drew contact, drew the foul. When Faust into the game 26 seconds into quarter number three, that foul was uh, Summer Hoying's second, and of course the first here in quarter number three. Oliver to McDermott. Now they're going to run two at the ball handler, making it tough on Bath to run any kind of consistent set offense. Oliver's pass is knocked out of bounds by Summer Hoying. And here's Oliver. And lobs it back out front, and it's tipped out of bounds. That time it was tipped out of bounds by Skyler Albers. Again, just really good defense there on the sideline. Out of bounds play by Fort Laramie. Got to cut hard if you're a Bath Wild Kitten. McDermott, Oliver. And Oliver works into the lane. Her scoop shot misses. Rebound, Victoria Mesher. Here comes the break. It's like hockey. <laughs> you know, you, you, know you, you throw head man to puck. What do they call it? Uh, head man to puck or whatever they call that thing where you throw it ahead like that. Okay. All I know is I'm proud of Gwen Faust. She got back she got in there back. and knocked okay. the puck Good. away. If that's where you yeah. want to stay with the analogy. Well, let's see if somebody lights the lamp this time. Uh -huh. Here's a three ball for Rose and bounces off the rim, but rebound. Put back up. That misses. Another rebound. And Brandewey forces the ball to the rim. She's got 12 in the basketball game. Three offensive rebounds on the first two possessions by Laura Me. Brandewey got her hands on that one. Jumper. Backside rebound, Rose, she goes up, nope. Faust fights for the rebound and she will draw a foul in the process. All five Wild Kittens, they've got to get down in there and help rebound right now. They've been able to get Fort Lormie into a half court game here early in the third, but Fort Lormie has pounded the offensive glass out of that half court offense. Jaden Rose will pick up her first foul as Marley Mason will enter and change up the bath line up a bit. Faith Clark lobs it to Mason, and they miscommunicate. The ball goes out of bounds. Relentless pressure by Fort Laramie, just making it so tough on the Wild Kittens. Got a jump stop there and find your teammate, but I understand that's easier said than done, Mark. Half, uh, one, two, two, half court zone by Bath. That pass gets lobbed out of bounds and almost took out a cameraman. Take out a camera, take out a $900 camera, and it's all part of the game. <laughs> Here's Ann Oliver to inbound. Ow. That hit the end of somebody's You finger. could hear that, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. Good pass from Clark. Ends up into the hands of Gwen Faust, and Gwen has six in the game. That was a nice assist. That ball goes out of bounds. Yep. And yep. Out Turnover. Outstanding assist. And then again, though, Fort Lormie said, okay, you scored a layup. We're coming right back. We're not going to feel sorry for ourselves. We're going to attack you. When Faust goes on the floor to get it, and her coach will take a timeout with 6.15 to go. Timeout. Our timeouts today are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. You can call 419-225-6067, or you can visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Dave, that was one of those situations. We're going to call a timeout just to save a possession. 6.15 to go here in a quarter. Yeah, that's Coach Mock's third timeout of the game. He has two left, but 
You might as well use them when they still may be valuable and maybe stem the tide a little bit and put yourself in a position to maintain possession, go down and score, and maybe you can get a little momentum on your side of the ledger. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken updates you with all area scores with our WOSN Scores app. You can download the app from Android or Apple stores or visit WOSN.TV. So Bath will get the basketball out of bounds. This will be Oliver. Looks like they're facing that diamond press again. All 10 girls on this side of half court. To Faust. She's trapped. Throw it ahead. Gwen Faust heads to the rim, and she's got another basket. She's got eight, four and a quarter. Nicely done by the Wild Kittens there. They've, they've fought pressure with pressure two times against this press. They've scored here in the third quarter. Uh, Brandon gets it, uh, throws the ball over to Hoying, and then goes down the corner, and Jaden Rose comes back with it on top. And that good defensive pressure by Ann Oliver, and the ball went out of bounds off of Hoying. Talking to Coach Siegel, she said, you know, down here in league play and a lot of uh, non-league teams that we play on our schedule, they play man-to-man. -man. She anticipated seeing this zone, uh, and she wanted to work against it. Sometimes she might say, hey, you're up 14-16. Maybe you get them to get out of that zone and play man against you. She wants to work against this zone, taking advantage of the opportunity. And Oliver all the way inside. Step through move, left-handed shot, and Oliver with a pretty move. Outstanding step through, good footwork. Nice left hand off the window. Back to a 14 point game. Brandon, we worked in the lane, Faust rebounds. Here's Faith Clark, and that ball is taken away from her on a really nice defensive play by Avery Brandon, but she's out of bounds. Again, Boy, what anticipation <laughs> she has. Yeah, uh, you got the rebound. Okay, we're just going to play defense on you right away, even off of a missed shot. We're going to look to trap. Again, Faith Clark doing a good job, but she realizes they're coming at me. Got a jump stop, up fake, and bounce pass through that. She's not going to be able to throw it over the top of these long arms of Fort Laramie. Claire Faust was out for about 20 seconds, just long enough. She spent the entire time talking with her coach. Here she is with a basketball, and that pass is caught away by Brandewe again. Pass ahead to the rim. Oliver got the block, but she also got foul number four. Transition again off the turnover. That is correct. And Oliver picks up foul number four to the free throw line. We'll go Skyler Albers. Our free throws today are brought to you by OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, standing, and assembly needs, you can call OPAC. Albers has five in the game now. 62% free throw shooter. Hits nothing but the bottom of the net there. Pushes the lead back to 13. And Oliver going to come out of the game. Again, it's 13, but it feels like more than that. And you got to credit Fort Lormie's just relentless defensive pressure for that, that sense. That rebound comes into the hands of Brandewee. And Brandewee again. Not only are they excellent prep in their press work, but they're going to climb it on the offensive boards here. Brandewee, three ball. That one will splash in. Three ball by Brandewee. She's got 15 in the game now. My stat page, she's got just four of those on the season, but that was a big one. It sure was. Shot it like she's made a lot more than four. McDermott trapped in the corner again. Faust. And Faust gets pushed out of bounds, I think. That will be the call. Let's see who they give a, or assess the foul to. It goes to... Matty Shadow, Matty has three fouls in the game. See, when, when Oliver's in the game, you got two six-footers, her and Faust, that can pass over traps. And when she's not in the game, it just makes that, that pressure so much better for Fort Laramie. Yeah, and then they're just enticing you. They're giving the trap zones uh, open, you know, an area right there. And there it is. We'll let you catch it there because then we're going to put two big girls on you. And, again, Faith Clark, she's got a battle, but – they got to try and find a way to enter the ball into an area that it's not susceptible to the trap. Easier said than done. Carlson throws it ahead. This is Faith Clark headed to the rim, and she has to bring it back out. McDermott. Claire Faust. 
Baseline jumper, rattles out for Gwen Faust. Heitkamp with the rebound. Pass inside, rim running, and ending up with a basket is Avery Brandaway. She's got 17 now, including nine and a quarter, and we're only halfway through it. Putting together a real nice game is Brandaway. Skyler Albers picks up foul number three and team foul four and a quarter as she runs Faith Clark out of bounds. Jaden Rose will enter, as will Carissa Meyer. And Marley Mason enters for Bath. The depth of Fort Laramie is creating that relentless pressure as well, and allowing it to be just so consistent. Kelsey Carlson, Mason, and Faith Clark. Carlson works inside, goes up left hand, shot it a bit hard. Faust was headed for the rebound and swatted out of bounds by a redskin. Faust goes down the floor to try to save it, and the arrow will stay with the Wild Kittens. 42-24, Fort Laramie on our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Carlson, left-handed push shot. Does a nice job right there, just attacking the basket. Good spin move to the middle of the paint and finishes. Kelsey Carlson's first basket of the game. She averages almost eight a game. Meyer throws it inside. Working inside that time was Summer Hoying. Her shot just rolled off the back side of the rim. Here comes Bath. Claire Faust. Works in the lane, spins. Really a solid defense, and she goes up strong and scores anyway over good defense. Yeah, two nice possessions for Bath, getting the ball down into the paint and then being steady, being patient, and going up strong with the shot. It's back to 14 like it was at halftime. But that's going to end as Summer Hoying gets loose, and she becomes a double-figure scorer with 10. Fort Laramie does a great job of when they get the ball in the baseline. Someone flashes to the elbow or to the block. That time it was Hoying at the elbow, and she squares up and drills it. Mason working against Heitkamp, and Heitkamp will get called for her foul. Number two, and the free throw line will go Marley Mason. Yeah, I like Marley Mason right there attacking. The last three possessions for Bath have been very aggressive offensively. They've scored on two and fouled on the on the last one here. Well, you know, Dave, uh, Claire Faust and, and Ann Oliver are the only two seniors who get significant playing time. It's really a pretty young Bath basketball team. It surely is, and, and, and again, it, it bodes well for the future. But again, this is a program that typically reloads instead of rebuilds, but they're, they're learning a little bit today from this Fort Laramie squad, which puts uh, three seniors in the starting lineup. Yeah, short there. jumper by Carissa Meyer. Points two and three for her as the lead goes to 17. Two minutes to go here, and Coach Mock will take a timeout. We're going to take a break also. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. You can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for $8 per month. You can download it on Roku or on Apple TV or sign up at app.wsn.tv. Bath Wild Kittens take their fourth timeout and bring Allison Harnisfigger in the game in the process of doing so, and she will inbound. Mason, Faust inside. Works, works, and gets her shot blocked on a nice defensive play by Summer Hoying. Like the sideline out of bounds. They got the ball into the corner, down to the block, just unable to convert. Actually, that was Mesher, 21 and not 41 with the block. Flash cut. That three missed. And Faust hustles after the rebound, but throws it to a redskin. And Mesher works the lane. And Faith Clark swoops in to grab a rebound and heads up floor. 
Faith Clark gets the rebound. The little girl out there, nicely done. Ooh. Faust into the lane, and she's going to get called for an offensive foul. Gwen Faust with foul number four. Claire control. Excuse me, Claire Faust with foul number four. Coach Mock thought there was a lot of movement defensively there. Defending his girls. Of course, we uh, have the Bath fans behind us, and they likewise felt the same way. Just two fouls in the quarter here for Bath, but that is the fourth one that goes against Faust, and she just gets a steal on a long pass. 17-point lead with a minute to go. Claire Faust. Mason on the wing. Faith Clark harassed out front by Rose. And she traveled. Extra step. 46.4 to go here in quarter number three. 46-29, our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Avery Brandway, Summer Hoying. Shadow goes baseline. Faust gets a block and a rebound, and she will be fouled and get to go to the other end and shoot free throws. Good opportunity to get some points on the board with the clock stopped. Alex Rose gets foul number three. She joins Skylar Albers and Maddie Chateau with three fouls. Claire Faust heads to the free throw line. She made a pair back in the opening quarter. She has picked six points in the game. Now seven. With 33 seconds, I'd like to say Lorimi may hold it for one shot, but I don't think that's uh, going to happen. I'm not sure that's in the game plan. <laughs> it's, if we can get one with 10, 11 seconds in the possession, we might be able to get another one. That's, that's their philosophy. Get, get a score and press and maybe get another score. Claire Faust again. Another free throw for her. She's got eight. And since she has a four foul, she will head to the bench and be replaced by Izzy McDermott. And Bath is really going to play an undersized lineup with both Oliver and Faust out of the game. Good zone press. We're going to take some time off the mm -hmm. clock. Yep. And now let's see how Fort Laramie plays this last 20 seconds plus. Chateau looks and looks, bounce pass, and her coach is going to take a timeout. Good defense by Bath. 13.8 to go. Well, Dave, let's talk about this Fort Laramie team. They have won the SCAL six years in a row. Most of those, they were 12-0. Twice they were 11-1. They're 9-0 this year, and it's 7-3. That's the closest team in the league, so the – the worst they can really do is, is tie for a league championship this year. They're going to win it again. They're going to win it again. State champions in 2021, 14-15, 12-13. Just as we mentioned at the opening, Coach Siegel just has done an outstanding job during her 25 years of leading this program. And right now, I've seen some really good teams in Northwest Ohio in Division IV, but there's a reason why the Redskins are ranked number one. Very impressed. They really are. The pass is blocked and batted inbounds. It's saved on the baseline. No, it's not. Bath will get it back with 10.8 to go. And as strange as it may sound, I know where if, you're they, going. if they score yeah, here, they, they will, will actually win the quarter. Win the quarter. Yes. yes. And... The clock did not start, so we're going to have to figure out where it should be right now. And what I like about that is the clock keeper right away said, my fault. He did. He took responsibility, so I don't know if they're going to run time off and not inbound it on the side or just start the possession well, over. Take it to seven. Yeah. If Coach, Coach Mock wants to know, yeah. Yeah, how, how do we come up with that plan? Yeah. I would say and you just start the possession over from the baseline. Well, the argument being that uh, the count was at three uh, as we're trying to beat the 10-second count. So 10.8 minus three, and that's where they get to the seven. I'm not sure exactly how those numbers work out, but that's the plan anyway. Is that the new math Well, that we teach today? Gwen Faust will inbounds. 
And I like it. Back pass. screen. Uh, stolen. Oh, it no. It is. Heitkamp's running the floor. And that's going to be a foul assessed to Gwen Fausch. Gwen picks up foul number three, but it'll be a take it out of bounds situation. Foul. On the baseline. Look for a lob inside. I see Summer Hoyne going inside there. And nope, the bounce pass is dead. Brandewee, and she shot, oh, just a bit hard. So we will head to the fourth with Fort Laramie on top of Bath, 46-31. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Fort Laramie, headed to quarter number four. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken is our scoreboard sponsor today. They are in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Mark Shine, Dave Bowen. Dave, it's a 14-13 quarter Redskins. Yeah, 14-13 quarter. Uh, Bath needed to dent into that from the second quarter, but overall, I love their smokeability. They're just fighting and fighting and fighting. A trait of a Greg Mock team. It just, again, we've t mentioned it. It feels like it's not working in their favor. Uh, and it isn't in reality, but man, they are battling. Brandon, we rebounds on the backside of those 14 points. She had nine in quarter number three for the Redskins. And Oliver back in the game. McDermott in the lane. And Oliver back on top, lob pass to Faust. It's knocked away from her, but we're going to get a foul. That goes to Victoria Mesher, and she now has three in the game. Yeah, good offensive possession there by Bath. They maintained possession off of the foul. Good passing. Again, you can just tell the difference when Ann Oliver's on the floor and when mm -hmm. she isn't for Bath. She's been in foul trouble throughout this entire contest. We're going to get a held ball. This one will go to Bath. Faith Clark was able to get her hands on the ball and force a tie up. Lob out front. Carlson's pass goes inside. Tipped away. Here comes Fort Laramie. Jane Rose gets it tipped away by Clark. But gets it back again and into the hands of Avery Brandway. Back cut. And Mesher missed a shot under pressure. Good back cut, good pass, just couldn't finish. Oliver, Kelsey Carlson, lob pass, and that's stolen. Very active play that time by Skyler Albers. Yeah, active and athletic. And finishing on this end is Summer Hoing. She's got 12 in the game on a good pass. Just so impressive of how Fort Laramie makes you pay when you make a mistake. That mistake was 94 feet from their basket, and they scored within five seconds at their end. Gwen Faust re-enters. She's got eight. She and Claire Faust are the leading scorers for Bath in the basketball game. Avery Brandwee has 17. Summer Hoing has 12 for Fort Laramie. Pass inside, Brandewee, turnaround jumper, posted up well, received a good pass and scored. Yeah, nice touch off the window from Brandewee. Oliver, back to Kelsey, or is it McDermott? Faust, steal, pass ahead, and finishing basket will go to Albers. Skyler's got seven in the game. Oliver again. 52-31 on our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. And power lap on a nice pass. Claire Faust, she becomes a double-figure scorer with 10. Yeah, you, can, you can get it down on the block. You can score it. It's just so challenging to get it there, Mark. Stolen. Faith Clark tips it to Oliver. Nice help side defense. Yeah. Oliver's going to try to go length of the floor, pull up jumper that's blocked, but she got a foul. I really liked Oliver there. Under control, jump stop, 12 feet from the basket, draws the contact. Skyler Albers becomes the first Redskins with four fouls. 
And to the free throw line goes Ann Oliver. <laughs> free throws today are brought to you by I OPAC in Osgood for all your industrial painting, standing, and assembly needs. You can call OPAC. Oliver has seven, and now eight in the game. Back to 17. Cross court pass, and a, oh, missed it inside. Chris Meyer, point blank range on a good pass, just had her bounce out on her. Here comes Oliver again. Back cut and stolen away. Here's the lead pass ahead to Brandewee. She goes cross court to her teammate and Summer Hoying finishes. Yeah, nice pass from Avery Brandewee to Hoying there. Unselfish basketball, great team basketball. Pushes the lead back up to 19. Those two have 33 points between them as Oliver goes to the rim and has an and one opportunity. Nice move by Ann Oliver. She just hasn't been on the floor enough today, Mark, to be able to do that with any consistency. Summer Hoying gets her third foul. Brittany Goodman will enter for Bath. She wears number 50. And Oliver has an and one opportunity. And she has 11 in the game. And she's going to take a seat as Allison Harnisch-Fager comes in. Bath to 2-2-1 press. Brandewey. And they break it. Hoing throws. Well, that's a nice pass. Rose finds Carissa Meyer with a really nice cross-court pass. How about this unselfish team, Dave? Exactly. I don't know if that's what Dr. Naismith thought when he invented this game, how that uh, press was broken by Fort Lormy right there, but that was perfect, nicely done. Harnesvigger's shot gets blocked. In the scramble, Faith Clark gets it. Meyer gets that one. Kind of wild play right now. Faith Clark has it. Here's a three that's going to go up, and a three will go in for Allison Harnisch-Fager. Nice shot. Got her feet set. Three. Nothing but cotton. Back at you three at this end. That will bounce out. Oh, nice rebound by Carissa Meyer. She soared in to grab that one. Gwen Faust will pick up her. Fourth foul, and to the free throw line will go Maddie Chateau. She's not been there yet today. You know, this swarming defense and the de different looks that Fort Laramie has given today. Uh, do you like to cook, Mark? Do I like to what? Cook. Eat. <laughs> well, I like to cook. And okay. You ever, you know, I like to make breakfast for supper, but you got so many things going on at once, you have to be perfect at it. You know, you got your pancakes, your bacon, your eggs, your scramble, and, and when you do it right, it's really, really good. But when you mess it up, you got something that's cold, something that's just not right. Well, Fort Laramie, their defense, they do it right. They surely do. Both free throws were down. It's 58-41. Free throws today are sponsored by OPAC in Osgood for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. You can call OPAC. Comes Fort Laramie the other way. And... Got a little bit active by Ariel Heitkamp. Needed to get a dribble down and couldn't. And we'll turn it back over to Bath. Emily Gomez heads to the scorer's table for Bath. Five count going out front. Mason looking for somebody to pass it to and picks it up. But not in time to get the five second count. Yeah, you can see the official from our vantage point counting it off. Here is Emily Gomez in. She wears a number 14 for the Wild Kittens. Bath's in the zone as they have been throughout the basketball game. Baseline pass, pass inside. Jumper will go up from Alex Rose. And the rebound comes to Gomez, who just checked in. No, it was Allison Harris figure, excuse me. Pressure out front on Mason. Got that five count working on her again. This time she gets rid of it. 
to Emily Gomez. Brittany Goodman. And a steal on the baseline. Headed the other way with a nice pass ahead to Chateau, and she will find Summer Hoying on a rim run for six points, 15 and 16. Nicely done again. It's a broken record, but the transition from defense to offense by Fort Laramie. Well, you know what I really like about that? Here's a steal. Headed the other way is Hoying again. And she missed that one under pressure, but her teammate rebounds in the form of Ariel Heitkamp, and Heitkamp scores. I started to say a second ago, Dave, we're going to get a little timeout while we get some subs in. If you're a big and you rim run, they're going to get you the basketball. Yeah, so exactly. if you're a big run, you're encouraged to run the basketball down the floor if you're a big. And that's great program coaching because that doesn't just start at the varsity level. That starts at the JV level. That starts at junior high. We want our kids to know that when you put the hustle in, you're going to be rewarded for it. 21-point lead for the home team. Subbed a couple of girls in. Autumn Turner, who wears number 10, is in the basketball game, as is number 20, Morgan Plyman. The point of that timeout just a moment ago was to get those young ladies in the game. Three ball misses for Bath. That shot was taken by Addison Gibson. It's number 33, Allison Holland, will enter. And my score page says they're all in the game now for the uh, Fort Laramie Redskins. Coach will be able to empty your bench today. And Coach Mock has done the same. Yep. Give these younger girls a chance to continue to work at their game at the varsity level in the arena of competition. There's a three that'll go. Knock that one down by Maddie Shadow. She's got five points in the game. That's her first made three-point field goal of the season. Here's a steal. And Shadow goes right to the rim and will score again. She's got seven all here in this quarter. Yeah, just if you make any kind of mistake, Fort Laramie is there defensively to take advantage of it. Under a minute to go. Our Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Gomez. Trying to get to the rim and gets cut off on a good defensive play. And that ball gets tipped loose by Maddie Shadow. She's having a really nice fourth quarter here. Pushing the ball the other way is Autumn Turner. This is Turner right here. And then Plyman. Pass inside. That shot was missed inside by Miley Shadow. And then going off glass and unable to finish was Maddie Shadow. And... Kind of a scrummer's Maddie again, and this one also misses, and we got a rebound. Rebound came to Emily Gomez, and this one is going to come to an end. The Fort Laramie Redskins will take a 67 to 41 win over the Bath Wild Kittens. So let's take a look at this a little bit, Dave, because I'm looking at quarter scores here at Fort Laramie 12, 20, 14, and 21. So quarters. Uh, two and four, really good for them. Yeah, and, and the defensive pressure that they brought uh, throughout the entire second quarter and especially the beginning of the fourth presented itself. Uh, Coach Mock's squad, uh, they're going to have some nightmares on these white shirts a little bit as they were trying to take care of the basketball. But having said that, Coach Mock's going to find some positives out of this that they can use as they go back into league play and continue to work at. I know that they're behind, as far as in the Western Buckeye League, they're behind Ottawa Glendorf. But, hey, you want to still do as well as you can and prepare for tournament, and you're not going to see this kind of pressure uh, until you get down to tournament trailaways. Uh, so that's something he can build off of from this contest. Bath will drop it to 11-5 and five on the season. They will stay at 5-1. and one in the Western Buckeye League. They were led in scoring today by Ann Oliver had 11 and Claire Faust had 10. They had quarter scores of 16-2, uh, 13, and 10. Got Coach Siegel's team, they go to 16-2 and two on season. They remain 9-0 and oh in the Shelby County Athletic League. Quarter scores of 12, 20, 14, and 21. They got big games from a couple of post players. Avery Brandy with 19, Summer Hoyne with 16. You get 35 out of those two, that's a good day. Absolutely, and again, Coach Siegel's going to talk about, hey, we want to expand our depth, and I want to see us continue to play as a team, be supportive of each other, find each other on the floor, because when we do that, 
we are almost unstoppable, and they showed it today. Mitch Westerheide is the athletic director. He helped us get all things set up today. Our score today was sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Our free throw sponsor was OPAC, and our timeout sponsor today was Metzger Financial Services. Jacob O'Neill did all of our technical work and camera work here at Fort Laramie today. He will take this back to the station on Beatty Road and edit it all together. And what he will see is Fort Laramie goes to 16-2 on the season with a 67-41 win over the Bath Wildkittens. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN.